वेलकम व्यूअर्स दिस इज एपिसोड थ्री ऑफ कैनेडियन मोजैक इट्स अ स्पेशल सीरीज विच वी आर डूइंग ऑन म्यूनसिपल इलेक्शन इन द फर्स्ट प्रोग्राम यू हर्ड पैट्रिक ब्राउन मेयर ऑफ ब्रैम्पटन इन द सेकेंड वी स्पोक टू अ कैंडिडेट फ्रॉम मिस सागा एंड टूडे वी हैव ब्रॉड फॉर यू अ यंग एंड ब्राइट आदिल खालकी वेलकम टू अवर शो थैंक यू वेरी मच इट्स प्लेजर टू बी हेयर थैंक यू and adil is uh, contesting election from milton ward 3 for right. uh, for councilor yes for town councilor yeah so adil please tell us about yourself and how did you get interested into this yes absolutely so i was uh, in 1999 i was born in pakistan uh, in lahore and i moved to canada with my family shortly afterwards when i was 1 uh, years old uh, and i lived in toronto for a bit till about 2012 and in 2012 i moved to milton which is where i live right now and as the years progressed in milton i fell in love with the town you know it's such a small town community that's growing so quickly and has a population that cares for each other and a community that cares about you know helping each other out and that's what vested me into being part of the community in milton rather than just being in the community um other than that i went to school at milton district high school uh after graduating there went to moha college and I did police foundations and advanced police studies and i've now been a police officer serving the community uh for over almost 2 years now and that's the reason i'm running because i believe that as a police officer it's about serving the community engaging in public service and helping people and that's the type of skill that i want to bring over to this role as well so that's a little bit about me that's so wonderful so being a police officer you can contest elections and if you win then you will take a sabbatical you will resign what will what happens to the police service so it's a bit different in municipal elections uh the police services act actually allows candidates to be a candidate in a municipal election and even if you win the election as a police officer in municipal as long as you're not policing in the same municipality <clears throat> that you are elected in you can continue to be uh, an elected official as a councilor um, and continue to be a police officer because I'm not a police officer in Milton I police in a different municipality mm-hmm. um, and I'm contesting in the municipality that I live in which is and what that's it. so wonderful i mean the, the such flexibility is something we also need probably yeah. in other countries so uh, tell us a bit more about that like uh, Uh, this uh, uh, being councillor is not a full time job because being police officer is a 24/7 job as i That's understand right, yes yes so local town councillor is not full time in nature um there are certain dates that uh, we need to attend council meetings and the schedule that i have in policing is very flexible and it's easy to be accommodated around the mm-hmm. times when i'm needed to you know attend council meetings and do my duties as a councillor hopefully when elected so it's able to be accommodated okay that's yeah. wonderful and tell us about a bit of your policing uh, like uh, real like uh, which because in police there are several branches and i think you can offer us a bit of a tutorial in canadian policing also particularly municipal and local policing yeah so first of all i love policing you know it's it's an amazing job because you get to go into those tough situations and solve people's problems um I've only been on for almost 2 years now like I said and I'm part of the uniform patrol section so where your frontline police officers when somebody calls the police through 911 or through non-emergency uh whether that's a more serious crime in progress or a, a neighbor dispute where are the frontline uniformed officers that go to that call mm-hmm. listen to the situation and come up with a solution um so that's what I'm doing right now and through that I'm learning and you know building the skill set that I already had to you know become a police officer but building those skills such as communications problem solving teamwork and going above and beyond for people when they're at their in many cases worst point in their life as a police officer yeah. Yeah. uh i will get back to this uh, because if i ask that question it will look like a digression but it is not a digression uh, per people with community engagement experience and community involvement of course can bring a lot of value to their policing job also uh, it, like how to respond in a certain situation particularly where mental health is involved and all yeah. that we'll get back to that and then uh, let's get back to uh, your campaign uh, so uh, give us an idea how big is the constituency in the in the sense of number of votes or in the sense of uh, square kilometer uh, area yeah so the town of milton is divided up into four wards um wards 1 2 3 and 4 uh, i'm running for the ward 3 area which is a, a unique ward because that's the ward which is seeing uh tons of new development coming in and it will foresee 
uh, much more development that's going to need to happen in the coming <clears throat> years as well. And uh, that's the word I'm contesting in for the local level, which is also in a unique situation right mm -hmm. now because the current councillor there, he's running for regional councillor this time. Mm -hmm. So this local position is open for a new representation to be elected. And I think that uh, allows for that open door opportunity for constituents in Ward 3 to choose somebody who's going to have a fresh new perspective mm -hmm. uh, to get the results that they need and um, you know solve the problems that they're facing or challenges that they have moving forward. Uh, but yeah, we elect uh, two councillors per ward. One is a regional councillor and one is a town councillor. Mm -hmm. So there, there are eight uh, representatives. And uh, yeah, so how, how are you placing yourself? Uh, uh, I mean, there are three uh, ways to look at any campaign. One is the, how many doors you have knocked. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit. The other is like uh, uh, there is an assessment of your potential to win from how many volunteers you have, what type of fundraising you did, and what type of diverse community people are supporting you. And the third is, of course, a very, very intuitive or gut feeling. So we'll start from the gut feeling. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm feeling great, you know, um, because I'm a person who works really hard. And I strongly believe that if somebody works hard and is passionate about what they're doing, and if their heart is in the right place for what they want to do with the job that they're going for, um, that they will be able to, you know, get the position that they're fighting for because that's how much it means to me in this case. Uh, that's the reason I became a police officer, you know, to serve the community, to help make a difference in people's lives and be the person that someone, when they're in a challenge, can go to and look at that person and say, hey, I need help with something. What can you do for me to mm -hmm. help you? And that's the kind of person I am, which directly will translate into this position as well. And to be able to earn people's support, I'm out there canvassing knocking on doors. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm out there making phone calls. I have a team of volunteers that come with me periodically to do this too. The signs are up uh, as of uh, mid-September and we're out there, we're building that momentum and we're putting the case out to the residents of Ward 3 and giving them the choice that they have to elect a person who's already serving the community, who has amassed thousands of hours of community service in volunteering, mm -hmm. who is young, energetic, and ambitious mm -hmm. and will do what it takes to fight for the residents of Ward 3. That's what I'm putting forward to the residents and I'm hoping that it resonates with them and that I can earn their support. It will, it will. So tell us about like how did you reach out to uh, volunteers? How many volunteers you've mobilized? Tell us about your volunteers uh, a bit. Yeah, so my network's actually been built <laughs> through the volunteering that I've done ever since I was uh, younger. When I was 10 years old, I, that's when I first started volunteering in the community. I've helped with numerous political campaigns. I've helped with Mothers Against Drunk Driving, Crime Stoppers of Halton, Milton Navy League Cadets, which is a local youth program, mm -hmm. other charity fundraisers. And through these events and throughout my high school experience helping within high school related events as well and college events at the college level, I've developed a friend group and a network that have you know also come out with me to help volunteer for those type of things. And I've you know, reached out to them when it came down to this opportunity here. And lots of them are open towards helping me out in my campaign. And uh, it's mainly just my friends yeah. and uh, close close people that I've come to know over the years yeah. through my experience. Volunteering is a great way of uh, developing new relations. Yeah. Uh, and those new relations then are, are, are actually one's social capital. And this is the time when that social capital turns into, you know, a further social capital, which is helping you. That's exactly. that's great beginning. So when did you first think of contesting election? Uh, I've always had an interest in politics. Uh, like I said, I, the first time I volunteered was when I was 10 years old, and it was actually for a municipal election uh, back in Toronto, which is where I lived. And I was out there as, as a 10 year old knocking on doors for this one uh, municipal election candidate. And I just fell in love with the concept of, you know, uh, listening to people, mm -hmm. communicating, being around people, and uh, just, 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 just helping people. You know, that's the bare root of it. It's, uh, you know, from volunteering events where I've just helped set up a table and uh, someone says, hey, thank you so much for your help. Those type of things I find really rewarding and doing what I can to, you know, help people is something that drew me towards this. Without uh, naming that candidate, is that candidate also contesting elections currently? Or it is, It's funny. Yes, he actually is uh, in Toronto uh, <clears throat> in one of the ridings over there. So, yes. It's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. It'll be great that if you get elected yeah. and that person is also elected, so that person inspired 
you know, exactly. Yeah, no, no, that that person was a motivational player. I'll say his name is John Burnside. Okay. Um, he's running for Don Valley East in Toronto. He used to be a police officer as well and oh, uh, okay. uh, a former Toronto City Councillor as well. And he was so, one of the first people who. So the reasons of wanting are more than just one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th yeah. There's a number of reasons. You know, it's uh, it's it goes it's mainly public service, extending mm -hmm. that service that I'm already doing as a police officer mm -hmm. into this role to, you know, having motivational figures in my life, like uh, John in this case, mm -hmm. who uh, I looked up to, you know, and uh, throughout the years helping with other campaigns as well at the provincial and federal level, um, seeing, working for good candidates on the campaign trails, seeing the passion that they have and the commitment that they have to wanting to make a difference in their community. That's really inspired me to want to do that myself as well. Okay. So when candidates mobilize volunteers, of course, they also uh, then try to do fundraising. Yep. Uh, for mayor election, for MP election, there are more funds needed, I mm -hmm. guess. So what is, like, tell us about that aspect. Like, how many funds one needs to raise and funds can be raised through various means. So tell us about that. Like, how many funds one needs to have to have a decent campaign? Yeah, absolutely. So individual candidates, we all have spending limits. Um, that uh, what's that uh, limit? The, the, it's different per ward, mm -hmm. you know, because it depends on the number of electors and a few other factors. Uh, yeah. And the town of Milton will determine. In this case, yeah, the town of Milton will determine uh, how much one candidate or their spouse together can spend on their own campaign. Mm -hmm. um, which is the reason they have the limit is they want to encourage donations from uh, the public through through other means. So that way, uh, a person who's really wealthy doesn't have an advantage over someone who's less wealthy mm -hmm. in these type of things. So that way, it's an equal playing field. Uh, yeah, donations are important. It honestly depends. So what's that uh, ceiling of uh, like uh, how much one, a candidate or their spouse together can spend on them? A campaign. Is yes, that... so it's different for each ward. Okay. Yeah. So what's, yeah, yeah. It for, what's, so what's it for you? For, for ward three, I believe uh, the new number come out is about 8,000. Okay. Um, is the max that I as an individual candidate or mm -hmm. if I had a spouse can spend together on an individual campaign. Mm -hmm. The rest has to be included through donations. Okay. So now the second part of the question, how much money you think one should have for a decent campaign? 10,000, 20,000, 50,000? For, for, it's hard to say. Um, because it depends on how many signs they're going to put up. It depends mm -hmm. on how much literature they're going to need to print out. So it, it honestly all depends. Uh, but I think the groundwork is really important. It's meeting with uh, the residents that you want to represent and getting your message out there. Um, you don't need lots of money for to be able to do that. Yeah, so yeah. Um, if you're able to do that, I think um, the amount you'll need to spend will vary. You know, it might be a lot. And uh, uh, has uh, like social media and reaching out to people on these web-based platforms, I think it must have brought the cost down over the years, like as compared to previous campaigns. Yes, yeah, social media is a great tool, you know, to get the message out there, um, especially after the two years where everything went virtual pretty much uh, because of the pandemic. Um, lots of people, you know, have looked at ways to get their information through virtual means. And uh, programs like these, social media uh, sites are key tools as okay. part of a successful campaign. And the third part of this uh, conversation is like how many doors are there to be knocked and how many you yeah. have covered? Yeah, I think there's about 10,000 um, doors in, in Ward 3 uh, because there's been a lot of new development there as well that uh, needed to be covered. I'm proud to say that I'm pretty much near the end of knocking almost every single door mm. um, and I'm on track to completing the rest of the ward as well in my canvassing efforts. Um, I've never sent a canvas out um, without myself being there. You know, mm -hmm. if I, it's either me alone at the doors or it's myself with like three, four other people um, because I strongly believe in the candidate themselves should be putting a face to the name um, when they're meeting with voters. Okay. So how to, what type of response you're getting from the doors you knock at and the people who come out of those doors? Yeah, so, so people are excited that there's an opportunity for them this time around to have somebody new elected into the local town councillor position, given that it's an open seat. And I think it's really resonating with people, the fact that we have a candidate who's you know committed to public service, is passionate, young and energetic about uh, doing this. And that's my message to voters. And I really think that it's resonating with them because I'm getting a lot of positive feedback at the doors. That's wonderful. Uh, viewers, we will take a little break a short break and then we'll come back and then we'll ask uh, uh, Adil how, like, uh, what, what is his uh, election premise and what are his promises, like if he's elected, what transformations or changes he'll bring to this constituency. Uh, please remain with us. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back, viewers. 
we are talking to mr adil khaliki who is a contesting election for councillor from ward 3 in milton yes adil please tell us about uh, your election campaign and uh, the platform your yes yeah absolutely so my platform is rooted in conversations that i've had with residents before while i was in the process of filing my nomination papers and it's made up of four parts and those parts are road safety hmm. street parking public services and public consultation and engagement now to break those down the first part of that is road safety you know residents have ongoing concerns in relation to um aggressive driving and bad behavior on our roadways uh there's a lot of families milton is a family based town mm-hmm. and the children are at play um people are walking people are cycling mm-hmm. and they're seeing a change a bad change in driving behavior that's causing them problems and i'm proposing that when elected to council i will liaise with the local police service of jurisdiction to get them to be aware of the problem areas that we have and get them to come and do enforcement in those areas mm-hmm. so that we can hold those drivers <clears throat> accountable and i'm also proposing that we implement <clears throat> technology based enforcement such as photo radar in school zones and those vulnerable areas to keep people safe from people who choose to speed on our roadways um the second part to this is is street parking uh we have very strict bylaws in relation to our ability to park on the street especially during overnight hours and during the daytime um what i'm proposing is to build off of the system that already exists so right now you can get 18 parking permits for overnight parking um per year per plate i'm proposing that we increase that from 18 and that's what i would push for mm-hmm. and i would also push for extending the daytime street parking time allowance beyond the currently allowed 5 hours so mm-hmm. that way it prevents residents from getting fined $40 from parking in excess of 5 hours and it prevents that overnight um fine for $40 as well because now they have more days to choose from and then we can always look at new ways to be more lenient in that regard um but that those are conversations to have at a later time so this would be the quickest way to implement that the third part of the pra- uh, platform is public services in which uh Milton has seen a rapid increase in growth in our population and a bunch of new homes being constructed. The reality is though, on the contrary, our public services such as infrastructure, snow removal and fire services have failed to keep up with this growth. We need to invest more in these services and I'm going to propose that we increase funding for those services. I'm also proposing that we increase funding for the transit system in Milton and look to add new bus routes. to connect us to nearby municipalities uh, so that we can actually have a transit system that gets people going to where they need to be okay to, one yeah. one little question on this like in the fire services and uh, uh, for this uh, snow removal yep. is it the municipality or the town of uh, milton which is investing or province also uh, or the region uh, or halton region also contributes to that so like if you are a councillor how much in uh, and if you succeed in influencing the town to increase investments yep. so what is the, give us an idea like how much it is being invested now and what is the benchmark you are aiming to yeah do? so 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 we can fund these services through a number of means a, a large amount of the funding comes from uh, property taxes at this time mm-hmm. however there are other ways to look at increasing <clears> that funding <throat> through other means so we can still keep property taxes relatively low so the third part of that public services platform is lobbying the provincial government mm-hmm. to get funding to be able to pay for these services and the much needed investment that's needed in them so that way we can we we can avoid increasing property taxes so dramatically but at the same time get that funding from somewhere else we can also look at user fees for certain areas and bylaw fines and seek reasonable increases in those places as well so that way we can still keep like i said the property taxes as low and they are the lowest right now compared mm-hmm. to the other municipalities that make up halton region but they don't need to be the lowest compared uh, by by over 50% they can still be increasing i think the public expects reasonable increases here and there mm-hmm. uh, but we they expect that their money is being used in an efficient way to pay for the services that can have quality services in our town and the last part of our platform or my platform is public consultation and engagement which means that I will host monthly public meetings with ward 3 residents so that way they're not just seeing me throughout an election time you know that's always a complaint from residents yeah. be like hey you politicians only come here during uh, an election season I want to get rid of that uh, you know uh, reality in many cases and I would do that by having proactive monthly meetings with ward 3 residents welcoming them to a location hearing from them their concerns over the term of 4 years 
and keeping them up to date with what's going on in council. And I would promote a lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion when making decisions in council. So that way, the public is, um, you know, the decisions made are rooted in keeping the public's diverse interests in mind as well. How diverse is uh, uh, Milton's uh, demography? Like, uh, if there are like uh, many uh, diverse populations, or there are like one dominant group, and then other like. Uh, smaller segments of other populations. Yeah, yeah. as Milton continues to grow, most of that growth is a diverse growth. You know, we have a large South Asian community in Milton, um, both a lot of uh, people from India, people from Pakistan, um, people from the Philippines. You know, there's there's a large uh, uh, amount of diversity in uh, in Milton. And I've actually seen so much of it when I've been knocking doors too. You know, I'm uh, meeting meeting people at the doors and I sometimes I ask them, I'm like, hey, where are you from? And it's, it's amazing to see uh, the different cultures that we have in mm -hmm. Milton in our board. How are the like uh, sports and recreational facilities in overall in Milton and in your ward? Yes, yeah, so so we we do have facilities in the town that provide you know those recreational amenities. Uh, however, those uh, systems book really quickly uh, when 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 a space is open. If you're not in, on that app, you know, booking that time slot within like two, three minutes, it, it's booked. Yeah. So like I said, that, that falls under the public services area <clears> too, right? <throat> As we continue to grow, the demand for, for more services of this nature uh, are, is something that's a reality. And that's what the public is expecting of us to you know, have for them. So that way they don't have to go to Mississauga or other municipalities to get mm -hmm. that type of service, right? We want to keep people in our municipality and it strictly comes down to us being able to keep up with the investments, with the growth, and having a balanced approach when looking at those two things. Okay. So let's like uh, get back to this uh, very important uh, uh, slogan or, or premise you have, uh, aggressive driving and road rage. Yeah. And uh, your approach is that you work with police and uh, the focus is on enforcement and on basically, being, uh, I mean, making people pay for their bad behavior, let's yep. put it this yep. way. Are there other ways of engaging community? I mean, could young people, because you're a young person and you know like uh, what makes people uh, drive aggressively or why people indulge into road rage. So are there other community engagement uh, avenues where people can be, you know, made aware of this, made aware of this aggressive driving and all that? And will you be looking at into that type of uh, engagement also? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the first part of my plan for making our roads safer is liaising with Halton Police, so that way we can, you know, work with them to to get drivers. Not just like you know, it doesn't have to be strict enforcement. Everybody that's breaking uh, a traffic law gets a ticket. It can also be an awareness campaign. But those campaigns have to come from the police service of jurisdiction because they're the ones who are in charge of enforcing our law. Mm -hmm. But if they're not aware of the areas that these problems are happening, and if they don't have uh, you know, a voice of the residents in the form of a counselor going to them to advocate those concerns that they're not going to be able to uh, sit down at the table and come up with a, a plan to educate drivers mm -hmm. about this. Um, that's because that's a huge component, education mm -hmm. and awareness. Mm -hmm. um, the police, I can personally verify based on my experience as a police officer, you know, uh, we are very uh, short staffed in many cases sometimes as well. And, and overworked also. Because right, of that, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the proactive initiatives like looking for cars to stop usually happens when um, there are less calls for service on the board, and when the because those come first, and that's when we look at you know proactive measures. So we have to look at that as well. How is the public transport uh, the facilities, both access wise and frequency wise, in in Milton and particularly in your ward? Ridership on our transit system is very low at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that's largely because our transit system doesn't really connect us to those nearby municipalities. Um, like, you know, we, we, we don't really go to the border of Mississauga. I think they're, they did make some recent changes as of September or early September um, that now we have a bus that goes to Lisker Go Station. Mm -hmm. However, uh, we need to do more to connect our transit system to other municipalities because the point of a transit system is that if somebody that lives in Milton, goes to school in Toronto, they won't be able to use the Milton transit system to connect them to the, to place, the, schools. the next municipality that they need York to go University to. York University or Toronto, right? yeah. Yeah, so we, we need to look at that. <clears throat> and if we add those bus routes, that'll increase ridership and we'll be able to get people where they need to go. 
And how are the health facilities like uh, which hospital caters to yep. Milton and uh, tell us a bit about that. Yes, yeah, so we, we have a hospital in Milton, Milton yeah. District Hospital, um, and public health care actually falls under the uh, scope of regional council, uh, which is uh, a position that voters will also elect. Yeah. They have a much bigger impact in relation to public health care yeah. uh, in this election. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> what are the other community issues which may not be part of your uh, 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 campaign? But of course, once you are a public representative, uh, and I understand that when you are campaigning, you have to be very focused on three or four things, yep. which you can you know, repeatedly tell people that these are the major issues we need to address. What are other issues uh, which, uh, in your view, people in Ward 3 in, in, in particular, but generally in Halt, uh, in Halton region or in Milton, they, I mean, there are those issues, but they are not being addressed. Yeah, um, you know, you know, the large main main thing I've been hearing is is the growth. You know, lots of people are either in favor of the growth, but not in favor of the way the town has done it so far. Uh, there are places. There's a place in Ward Three where we're getting high rise uh, building uh, coming in in a very condensed area. Uh, there's warehouses coming in our ward as well. Um, so how we plan our, our growth and our planning is something that's uh, very much uh, on the minds of constituents at this time. And it's a very delicate issue because growth is prescribed by the province of Ontario. And our job is to see to that growth by allocating land towards where we're going to put houses, residences, uh, and then we need to zone that land in relation to how it's going to be distributed. We will we will continue yeah. this conversation. This yeah. is very important. That, that's it's that's a, the main. It's that time yeah. time for a little break, short break sure. again. Yeah. Uh, we will uh, we will rejoin after a short break. We are talking about uh, like uh, other issues which uh, uh, Milton is facing, and Adil was uh, telling us about those other issues, particularly growth related. We will resume this conversation as soon as we come back. Stay with us, viewers. Welcome back to our show, Canadian Mosaic. We are talking to Mr. Adil Khaliki, who is uh, running for the election of, uh, for the seat of councillor from Ward 3 in Milton. Uh, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Uh, Khalik, please tell us about uh, this uh, voter behavior in this constituency uh, and, and, and in Milton generally. What type of voter turnout has been there? What type of voter turnout you're expecting? And people who are the first time voters probably they should naturally gravitate to vote for you. So tell us, like, uh, tell them how can they uh, access, uh, like, the polling station, how can they access that information, That with, what they need to do, where they can go, if they haven't got that voter card, who should they contact? Yes, absolutely. So in municipal elections, uh, the voter turnout historically has been pretty low. You know, in 2018, it was about 30%. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal this time for myself, and I know for other candidates as well, is we need to increase the voter turnout. We need more people to come out and vote because municipal elections are so important because they deal with your everyday issues. Uh, advanced voting is from October 10th to the 16th. Mm -hmm. um, you can go to any of the advanced voting locations. And last day to vote is October 24th. Mm -hmm. You do not need your voter card to vote um, because that's a common misconception. Whether you Sometimes people get it, sometimes people don't. If you don't get it, all you need to do is you can still go without it. Just bring an identification that has your name and address on it, and they will allow you to vote. Uh, in the ward that you belong to. Um, so so that's the goal this time around, to increase the voter turnout. And I think that this time around, by having, you know, as, as a young person that's energetic um, and out there that's showing that passion to the residents, I think we'll be able to do that this time around. Okay. In certain areas, and generally in Canada, seniors' population is growing and they are reaching almost to 25% one, every one and every four person is a senior. Seniors have a particularly diverse seniors who came here as immigrants or who came here as sponsored by their children. They have usually mobility issues, accessibility issues. So in certain uh, municipalities, I know that uh, there are people who mobilize transportation and then reach out to seniors and transport them to polling stations. Do you think that is an issue in your constituency? And are there any plans you or other candidates uh, may have? Yes, yes, absolutely. So the town of Milton has uh, contingencies in place in relation to um, opening the door to accessibility for voters that require accommodations. Uh, you know, arrangements can be made for 
a voter that needs an accommodation to come out and vote, and that can be arranged. Yes, transportation. Um, okay, so that is that is on the card. Yeah, that's on the card. Uh, at the end of the day, if somebody needs a ride to the poll, I will drive you to the poll. Okay, you know, okay. lots of candidates are willing to do that as well um, to to ensure that we can get people to vote because it's that much, that's important. Okay. Uh, are there more young voters, like, uh, or there like middle-aged voters? Uh, please tell us about the demography of voters, your potential yeah. voters. Yeah, so Milton is a family-based town, and the average age is about 34 years old in Milton. Um, council doesn't really reflect that right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I am the youngest candidate that's running uh, for the local position in Ward 3, and I think that speaks volumes and is important to have a mixture of uh, that type of experience level and representation in council. We need that mixture of diversity, that young perspective mixed with the older experience perspective to ensure that we can, when looking at the problem solving model, when we're looking at a decision that requires a solution, um, you know, we, we, we need to uh, be able to have a mixture of experience levels at the table making that decision. Yeah, that's wonderful. So in these uh, four seats, for, uh, which are like local seats, how many total candidates, if you have a rough idea, are running and how many of them are young like you? None or maybe a couple? Yes, for Ward 3 local, I'm the youngest. <laughs> yes. um, and there, there's I am competing against four other opponents um, who are also fresh candidates. And uh, nope, they, they, they're they not as young as I am. And uh, Are there any women also in running in this election? Yes, there's uh, two women running. In, uh, in, in this three, ward? In Ward 3 local, yeah. yes. And yeah. in the other like uh, three uh, seats, like uh, what's the demography or what type of candidates there are? Or this is the this is the real battleground yep. where where is the like uh, fierce competition? The, the fierce competition is is it's honestly like when there's no incumbent mm -hmm. in in a ward like for the local yeah, that's, this time around. That's what I, I would say that those races are always the most interesting to watch, mm -hmm. given that uh, uh, residents will be choosing somebody new. So whoever works the hardest, whoever um, you know shows their passion and commits themselves to uh, putting their case forward towards the voters uh, and the voters will ultimately decide. So those races are always most interesting uh, because there's a lot to learn there too based on the results of what happens after the 24th. So this, this yeah. constituency in that sense is very unique. In yes. the other three constituencies, the incumbents are also contesting the elections. Yes, so so there's uh, an incumbent running for the regional level, there's an incumbent running at the regional level mm -hmm. against the current councillor who is vacated the position I'm running for and running for regional councillor against the third uh, candidate as well at the regional level. And how many candidates there are at the regional uh, level position? Just two or many? Uh, yeah, so or? so each position gets selected one person. Yeah. So regional council will have somebody elected. But there's no, no, that three, I understand. Three, like yeah, how many opponents. people are contesting for that one seat? Regional council, three opponents. Okay. The position I'm going for, five including. Five including. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's quite a competition. Yeah. And uh, uh, please, uh, next two minutes are yours, you are talking to your potential voters. Yeah. When you knock at a door, just give us a glimpse. How do you open the conversation? How do you carry the conversation? Yeah. yeah. Well, absolutely. I introduce myself. I say, hi, I'm Adil Kalfi. I am running for your uh, local town councillor position here in Ward 3. I've lived in this community for the past 10 years, since 2012. And by way of profession, I'm a police officer. And that's the reason I'm running, to extend that public service into this role as well. And I also believe that as a young person who's diverse and energetic and passionate, that that's the type of representation we need in council. And then I open it up to them. You know, I, I want to hear it from residents because listening to residents is a key component of being a good advocate. Mm -hmm. And I always allow that opportunity for the resident at that door to voice their concern and ask those questions. And if they don't have any at the time, I refer them to my phone number and email address and contact information on the back of the card that I, that I give them because I want to hear from them. Because the moment somebody stops listening is the moment they start becoming out of touch with the community. Mm -hmm. So even as a police officer, listening is 99% of the job and 1% of it is actually communicating back. And that usually is just solving the issue that's there based on the perspective that you've gathered. So my goal when elected is to be the best advocate I can be for Ward 3 put people's concerns first and make the best decision possible and be accountable when things don't always go the right way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, when you open up uh, this conversation, which is one of uh, which is uh, which one of the four issues gets more traction with the like uh, your potential voters? Yeah. Yes. On which issue yeah. they delve more into conversation and ask you more follow-up questions? Yes, so so road safety and the uh, lack of investment we have right now in our public services are the two most central themes I've heard, uh, and then the other two come just pretty close to that as well. 
but uh, the the public services component and road safety is is a huge concern that uh, when they flip the card over and they see those things on the platform, uh, they really resonate with that because it's a real concern that they have. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, uh, you, your volunteers also go knock at the door on your behalf, or you are always with them when when like your team is knocking at the doors. I am always there. I am always there. I usually have. I I, I don't like going with a large group because I want to you know take over that position where the volunteer might have somebody at the door because I want to introduce myself to every single person that answers the door. So I have a handful of volunteers that will be knocking the next door right beside me. And as soon as I finish the conversation I'm having with the voter at my door, I try to run over and try to introduce myself to the 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 voter that's at the door my volunteers at. Last couple of questions. Now you are doing a full-time job also, yep. which is actually very, very full-time job being a police officer, as, as we say, 24-7. So have you taken off uh, from work or like, uh, and what are the times when you go out and knock at the doors? I'm knocking throughout the day, um, mm. throughout different times. Uh, I have balanced my vacation time. I haven't taken any additional time off. I've taken time off uh, that I've already been allotted throughout the year as vacation time and booked it off in a way whereby I prioritize this campaign just as much as my current commitment at work as well. Um, so I'm knocking in the evenings, uh, in the late afternoons, and uh, any any time I have, it's dedicated to this campaign on my days off when I'm not working as a police officer. Um, it means a lot to me to be able to do this, and I'm going to continue working hard to be able to earn the support of the voters. That's wonderful. And uh, from like uh, my conversation with you, I, I feel that energy and that yeah. passion and that compassion you will bring to this job. I wish you all the best. And I'm sure like, uh, if in this uh, span of uh, 40 minutes, I have uh, sort of, uh, yeah, you know, uh, felt that you have that what it takes to represent people and to lead the community. I'm sure your voters will also uh, feel that and believe in you. All the best. And uh, we wish you good luck. Hopefully we'll be talking to you again after you have taken oath and you have run, I mean, you have served the community for a year or so to see like how it is. Uh, feeling after like a year or so into the job. All the Hopefully. best. Thank you so much. Thank you viewers uh, for watching this show. Uh, we were talking to Mr. Adar Khaleki who was uh, who is contesting election from Milton Ward 3. Uh, next week we will come with an other candidate and till then we bid you good night. Thank you. Thank you.